Something that a lot of Floyd Mayweather fans and boxing fans don't realize is that Floyd Mayweather didn't reach the peak of boxing world with ease. He trained hard and struggled throughout the early years of his career so he could end up with the perfect 50 win and 0 loss record. Although he had no losses, his career was full of ups and downs, sometimes getting to the brink of losing but still turning the scorecards of the match to his favor. He got hit, fell, bled, but still got up and fought to secure his legacy. In this video, we will be checking out three of the matches that he almost lost, but still proved that he knew the sweet science of boxing better than anyone out there. The first fight we will be checking out is Manny Pacquiao vs Floyd Mayweather. First up, we have a fighter that had owned 8 boxing belts from 8 different weight divisions. He was fast and is considered to be the best southpaw boxer of all time. Pacquiao came in confident to the match, swarming Floyd with loads of punches from different angles, most of which he threw in bunches and combinations. But as good as he was with his speed, he didn't think through how to pierce Floyd's defense and make those punches land. Either way, Floyd threw lesser punches but had more of them landing and making damage. In the viewer's eyes, Pacquiao did very well as he threw the most punches in the match. He himself thought that he was dealing damage to Mayweather, but in reality, very few of them made contact. Mayweather used his countering abilities very effectively after he knew Pacquiao didn't have a plan on how to pierce his defense. This meant he would set traps for Pacquiao to jab so he could parry that jab and counter to the drop breaking cross. This really did the job on breaking Pacquiao's spirit throughout the rest of the match. Although Pacquiao was a fierce fighter and could handle hard blows, this didn't mean he wasn't losing the rounds. The judges agreed to give most of the rounds in favor of Mayweather. This meant Pacquiao only toppled Mayweather in 2 of 12 rounds, and the rest was given to Money Mayweather. Eventually, the stats clearly suggested Mayweather as the winner which led him to an unquestionable victory. The second fight that we're going to be checking out is Mayweather vs Marcos Maidana. Maidana's best approach to Floyd's deadly jab was sliding it up and parrying it with his gloves. This immobilized Floyd Mayweather by a lot because, as everyone knows, Mayweather has a whipping jab by which he achieves most of his points in most of his matches. Marcos Maidana also used his wide hooks in combinations to come around Floyd's impregnable defense and do damage, which worked for most of the match. His technique mostly involved cornering Floyd to the ring's posts and coming in with wide hooks. This indeed gave Floyd a hard time dealing with him in the ring, cause most of those punches landed on his head and did a lot of damage. This was a fight in which something happened that no one could ever imagine. Maidana broke Floyd's teeth. Yes, you heard that right. And it's said that he still displays it on his neck to this day as an ornament of the great damage he did to Floyd Mayweather, the king of boxing. But although Maidana had that fierce fighting spirit in him, all he had basically planned out for the fight against probably one of the best defensive boxers of all time was to come at him as soon as the bell rang. And he had planned out nothing on how to pierce that impregnable defense. Maidana's biggest weapon was probably the overhand right hook that most local gym coaches teach their students. This is essentially a wide right hand coming from over top hitting the jaw of your opponent. But this worked to some extent. Floyd knew exactly how to defend that with his Philly shell guard and his uptight defense. Even though some of those hard overhand right hooks landed on Floyd's face, he wasn't one of those fighters that would be shook by it. He, Floyd Money Mayweather, showed Maidana who the real king of boxing was. He started countering his boxes left and right by uppercuts and hooks and never letting Maidana touch him again. As the mastermind Floyd was, he slowly knew all Maidana had to him was the overhand rights and nothing else. The few other hooks that Maidana hit him with on his ribs and eyes didn't do much damage. So throughout the match, he started countering those and setting traps for him, 
which earned him points and gave him the win by a victorious unanimous decision. Miguel Cotto vs Floyd Mayweather This is the last fight we will analyze and it is the man that made Floyd bleed not for a bit but throughout the whole match. You hell of a champion, you're the toughest guy I've ever fought. This was Floyd Mayweather's message to Miguel Cotto after the 12 round battle in the ring. Miguel wasn't one of the fighters that we talked about previously. He didn't only have a plan while coming in the ring, but he also had the best boxing fundamentals out of all of them. This essentially meant his footwork was on point and his guard was almost unpierceable. A wise boxer once said, doesn't matter what your attack plan is, you will only achieve victory once your defense isn't down while attacking. Miguel Cotto had his chin tucked and his right hand always protecting his chin when he launched his attacks on Mayweather. He also made the man that doesn't bleed that easily have a nose flushing out blood for almost half the match. Floyd's biggest mistake in this match was that he didn't learn from his lessons 5 years prior. I'm talking about his match versus Oscar De La Hoya in which he almost got destroyed with his jab. 5 years later Miguel Cotto did the same thing which made him bleed for hours. Not only was Miguel Cotto's blows hard, his jab was also whipping fast. Even though Floyd Mayweather got hurt, he never showed it. Even though he was bleeding and everyone knew that he was affected by the blows, he kept nodding his head and showing that he never got hurt. Eventually after handling all that for some rounds, as the genius of boxing Floyd is, he found a way to go around Cotto's guard, and yes, literally go around it. Floyd figured the way to inflict damage to Cotto was to use his wide right hooks and hit him from the side. He set this up by confusing him with the straight jab, pulling his guard to the center and coming from the side with the looping hook. This worked pretty well on his behalf and eventually increased his points way more than Cotto's. At the ending rounds, Cotto pretty much only tried to clinch and not get knocked out by the heavy blows of Floyd Mayweather which ended the match with Floyd winning by a unanimous decision.